everyone. I have a progress report for WinU Pro preview number two. Um, so let's check these features out. Let me just open up the program here. And the first thing that you should notice is this sync button over here, which is for connecting your controller to the Windows Bluetooth stack. So if I open up the default Bluetooth stack, you can see there's no controllers here. So what I can do is I can just click the sync button and it brings up this window. It says searching and then I just press the sync button on my controller. It'll find it and once it's done syncing the controller, it'll automatically close. And there it is. It's synced and paired. So I can, you can see I can connect to it right here. I can change these LEDs. So you can see that it's actually speaking to it. And so if I open up the Bluetooth settings page, if you get this window, don't worry about it, just close it. Um, but you can see that the controller is now connected. And if I want to disconnect, I can just hit the disconnect and you can hold the power button to turn the controller off. And the controller is now off. And then you just hit the A button to search out and sync the controller and it's connected again. I hit connect and you can see I can change the LEDs and so it's communicating. So this will make working with the Microsoft Bluetooth stack a whole lot easier, save a lot of hassle, and it, it just makes things really easy. So the next feature I'm going to show is probably small in comparison to that. That's probably the biggest one. But in the inputs assignments on the keyboard, I have now added the detect key. So you can click in this box and you can just start hitting keys and it will add those automatically. So that should um, speed up the assignment process for you guys. In this build, I have also integrated the latest version of VJoy, which is 2.1.8. As you can see, they show up here. If I open up the config window, you can see that I have two devices set up right now with just a bunch of random things on right now. Um, and so you can see those in when you Pro with this little drop down. And you can have all these buttons. You can have up to, I think, 128 or something like that. Um, Joystick 2 has a continuous POV hat switch right now. Uh, number one, the first one has a four directional. I'll show you what that does in a second. So let's go over to our D pad and start assigning those to the four directional POV hat switch. Let's also set up some button assignments. And like everything else, you can have multiple of these trigger at a time. Finally, let's set up some access assignments. Actually, on this one, let's set up two. Let's also do the negative Z axis only. You know, notice that those are split. So if I open up joy.cpl to open up the joystick configuration, we can see this in action here. I can press the A button to light up multiple buttons at a time, move the joysticks, um, move the X and Z rotation, Z axis, and you can see the Z only goes in the negative direction because I only set up the negative direction. And moving around the D-pad, you can see that the second POV triggers when I'm moving the first. I don't recommend, I don't know why you would want two POVs anyways, but the transitions from each direction is smooth, but there's no diagonals. Um, so that's because I'm using the four directional layout. If I switch that to the continuous, like I have set up on Joypad 2, then we can get diagonals. So let me change those. Alright, so if I go to the second joystick to check that out, and if we move around our D-pad, you can see we now have diagonals when we're using the continuous. And all the transitions are smooth from one end to the other, so uh, I recommend using continuous and not the four directional at all. And the last thing to look at is the calibration. Um, you'll see that the dead zone is now a square instead of a circle. This is actually way more accurate. You can see like when I put it in the corners, that's exactly where it transitions to and from. So uh, that will give you more accurate um, control over the dead zones. And they're still um, asymmetrical, so I can change either side independently of the other. As for WinU Soft, I will be working on an update for that right now in order to get that sync feature in there and some other enhancements and bug fixes. 
and then it'll be right back to Win U Pro, trying to make it feature complete, adding f all the controller support, and then releasing. And then once the Switch Pro controller arrives, that will be my focus of getting that controller working. Um, and speaking of more controller support, uh, I've also verified that the Hori Battle Pad works fine, the PDP Fight Pad works, um, except the I know the triggers feel analog, but they only register as digital when you press them all the way down, so that's kind of sucky. Uh, also, the Pro Controller U, that really weird third-party controller, is working too. Also, some of you have expressed uh, the desire for more controllers outside of just Nintendo ones, like the PS4 controller, for instance. Um, that can be started looking into a bit later, once this is released and once the Pro Switch controller is looked into. Um, also, at that point, I plan to be open source as well, so other people can just work on that and implement those. Um, also possibly just working on any standard HID direct input control support. Um, so that's kind of the plan. And that concludes this update. If you're a donator, check your inboxes. I've sent you guys this build for you to test out and provide me with your feedback and bug finds. If you've donated and you don't see it in your inbox, let me know. Just email me with your name and email address. There's some emails that sent, uh, came back with failure notices. Um, so that's probably what happened and with that I would just like to thank you guys for your support and for using the program I hope you continue to find it useful. Thanks